<laughs> Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 109. Please turn to it. Page 109 and today is our lesson number 57. We are dealing with the notion of absolute value. Yesterday we discussed what, what it means to have an absolute value. And today we are going to do the very first problem on the page that you see there, 109. Problem number 263. 263. It says 3y minus 2 is greater than or equal to 7. Now listen, before we do this particular problem, 3y minus 2 is greater than or equal to 7, I want you to pretend that this quantity, 3y minus 2, I want you to pretend that that quantity equals x. Okay? And then we'll substitute that later on, but let's just solve it in this form because it's easier to analyze this. Once we understand this concept, then we'll worry about that one. So what does it mean when we say absolute value of some number is greater than or equal to 7? Let's show it in the number line, shall we? What this tells us is that here is our 0, here is our positive 7, and here is our negative 7. But if, if, if the number happens to fall here, let's say, let's say a, a negative 4, Absolute value of negative 4 is 4, and 4 is not greater than or equal to 7. It's not. It cannot fall in this region. What happens if it happens to fall between 0 and positive 3? If it happens to fall here, say positive 5, again, absolute value of positive 5 is 5, and 5 is not greater than or equal to 7. The solution to this absolute sign, absolute inequality, tells us that the value of the x value of the x, whatever it is, has to be either more than 7, more than 7 in this region right here, and we will have a closed circle, closed circle tells me that we have an equal sign here, or it has to be less than negative 7, it has to be less than negative 7, again with a closed circle. Why? Well, we'll show why. For example, for all we know, x could be 20, x could fall somewhere here, positive 20, an absolute value of positive 20 is more than or equal to 7, because absolute value of positive 20 is 20, and 20 is more than or equal to 7. Or, x could be negative 11. If x happens to be negative 11, if x happens to be negative 11, again, absolute value of negative 11 is equal to positive 11, and that, of course, is more than or equal to 7. So what we find is the solution falls in this region or that region. The exact same thing is going to go on, which tells us, which tells us that, which tells us that when we are given something like this, when we are told that absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 7, what this tells us is that x is either, x is either less than or equal to negative 7. You see this region right here? Let's put it in a different color so we can see it. X is either less than or equal to negative 7 or x is greater than or equal to positive 7. Those are the solution, those are the regions where the solution lies. x has to be less than negative 7 or something more than positive 7. Positive 7 or equal to equal x has to be more than or equal to positive 7 or x needs to be less than or equal to less than or equal to negative 7. The solution lies in these two regions right here. The same exact thing is going to apply here. This tells us that 3y minus 2 is either less than negative 7 or 3y minus 2 is more than positive 7. So let's do it together then, shall we? We need the room obviously, so we need to raise all of this thing. So this tells us, this tells us that either, either 3y minus 2 is less than or equal to negative 7 or 3y minus 2 is greater than or equal to positive 7, just like as you see here. The only difference is that instead of x, we have replaced the x with 3y minus 2, but it doesn't change anything. Exact same concept applies here, except now on the number line, on the number line now, we are not expressing the value of y, we are representing the value of 3y minus 2, we are expressing the value of this expression, 3y minus 2, which we represented earlier with the letter x. 
continue then. And that's what it is. So now all we have to do is solve for y. All we have to do is solve for y. So let's do that, shall we? We want to solve for y, we want to bring the 2 to the other side. So we add 2 to both sides. And 2 cancels out. And we end up with 3y is less than or equal to negative 7 plus the 2 is going to give us negative 5. You see, we add 2 to both sides. Solving an inequality is no different than solving an equality. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is that, in other words, you can do anything that you could do when you're solving an equality, you could do with inequality. The only thing that we have to keep in mind is that if we want to multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number, then we need to switch the direction of the inequality. For example, for example, we know that 3 is less than 4. Of course we know that. But if we want to multiply the both sides by negative 1, so if you want to multiply both sides by negative 1, the negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, and 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, and negative 3 is no longer less than negative 4, negative 3 is in fact more than negative 4. So we have to switch the direction if you want to multiply by a negative number, or divide by a negative number. That's all. That's all. But here we are not dealing with multiplication and division, we are simply doing the addition, so nothing changes. So 3y is less than or equal to negative 5, divide both sides by 3, and we find that y is less than negative 5 over 3. That's our first solution. Here we add 2 to both sides, just like before. The 2 is going to drop out, and 3y is greater than or equal to 9, which divide both sides by 3. Again, since we are dividing by a positive number, it's perfectly okay. It does not change the direction of the inequality. Same thing here. We divided both sides by the positive number. Since we are dividing by the positive number, it doesn't switch the direction of the inequality. So 3 is going to drop out, and y is greater than or equal to 3. Those are our two solutions. Those are our two solutions. Now we need to verify the solutions. We need to make sure that this thing actually makes sense. Where can we do it? I don't want to erase any of this thing. Let's do it on the bottom here. Let's do the simple one first. This one tells us that y is more than or equal to 3. y is more than or equal to 3. Let's pretend y is 5. Let's pretend y is 5. So we have 3y minus 2 if y happens to be 5 because you see 5 is more than or, more than or equal to 3. We put putting in 5. So 3, 3 times 5 is 15. 15 minus 2 is 13. And as you can see, 13 is more than or equal to 7. It works. 13 is more than or equal to 7. It, it holds. Now this one tells us that y is less than or equal to negative 5 over 3. Negative 5 over 3 is negative 5 over 3 is same as negative 1 and 2 third. Negative 1 and 2 third. Can you think of a number that is smaller than negative 1 and 2 third? How about negative 2? Negative 2 is less than negative 1 and 2 third. Let's put in negative 2 here and let's see if it holds. So we find that we find that we, here, we, here we verify. So 3y minus 3y minus 2, we put in negative 2 here. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 minus 2 is going to be negative 8. And we find that negative 8 is in negative 8. And of course the absolute value of negative 8, because this is the absolute value, you see? Same thing here. Here we didn't have to worry about absolute value because it was a 13. 13 of course is more than 7. But absolute value, we have to take the absolute value of this expression. When, x, when y is equal to negative 2, Question is, how much is the absolute value of this quantity? The answer is, the absolute value of this quantity, this quantity turns out to be negative 8, and the absolute value of that quantity is positive 8, which of course is more than 7. So that checks out, and that checks out. That tells us that our solutions are correct. One value of y is negative 5 over 3, or if you like, y, not, not just one, uh, negative 5 over 3, but anything that is less than or equal to negative 5 over 3, or anything that is less than or equal to negative one and two-third. Another possibility is the other region on the positive side where y happens to be any value as long as it's more than or equal to three. And those are the solutions. Let's keep the two so separate here. We must have clear demarcation. There we go. Demarcation is the word that we just used. We said we must have a clear demarcation to keep the two separate. And of course you know what it means. Demarcation means boundary, border. Outline and I'm, I'm sure we learned it. There we go. I'm looking at the vocabulary list here under D and I just found here We learned this word in our vocabulary lessons 
We learned this word in our vocabulary lesson on day number 12. In case you're interested in improving your vocabulary as well, if you just type in Keshwani and then vocabulary, day 12, it will pop right up the video. And in that video, we learned the word demarcation long time ago, which means, as I said, boundary or border or outline. We must have a clear demarcation so we can keep the, keep the two separate. I will see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.